Welcome back. My name is Craig Carroll, President of Team One Plastics. And it's my pleasure to have with me Jeff Mangle, Partner and Plastics Industry Specialist for the accounting firm Plant Moran. We're talking a lot about the plastic industry. And to sort of wrap up, Jeff, you've been in the industry now for almost 20 years, seen a lot of positive and negatives. What would you say are some keys to success in this industry? Well, I'm gonna, there's three keys that I've been following and looking at. One is complexity and complexity management. So as businesses, we tend to accumulate customers, accumulate resins, accumulate molds, accumulate presses. <coughs> and what we fail to do is adequately prune it on a, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So what complexity is, is you need to have the right resin, right press, and the right mold at the right time in order to make a dollar. Right. So if you don't have any one of those three is missing, you're off. Right. If I have a lot of molds, a lot of resins, a lot of presses I have to manage, that's just getting into your scheduling algorithm that you have to get into. But it's more than just the scheduling algorithm. It affects your setups. It affects your inventory management. It affects your, your uh, safety stock levels. It affects your delivery requirements. It affects your um, uh, quality systems in place. Um, and frankly, it affects your headcount in the indirect space. Mm. It doesn't affect your direct laborers. It affects your indirect laborers, which are a lot more expensive. Yes. So from that perspective, I think complexity management is one of those things that says if, it's, if you check your complexity, which we define as resistance, probable resins, the ones you use 80% of the time, mm -hmm. molds that you use on a recurring basis, and presses that you use um, uh, regularly, right. and compare that over years, and then do the same thing with total resins that you have, total molds that you have, and total presses that you have, and do that comparison. And an example would be some company may come in with a a probable resin complexity or a complexity measure of, let's say, 500,000. But if I say, what's your worst case, which is what's your total resins, total molds, and it comes in at 2.5 million, wow. that says there's a lot of molds and resins I don't use very often that I'm managing. Right. And why am I doing that? So that's one of the things that you want to take a look at. And uh, also it helps you manage your business a little bit better. So that's one. Two would be value add. I'm a big believer in value add. Value add is labor, I'm sorry, is sales minus cost of sales. Um, and put it another way, sales minus material costs right. and purchase components. Okay. So uh, you take those out, and it's really what you convert in your four walls. Right. You divide that by either headcount or what I prefer labor dollars. Yeah. And I put total labor dollars in there because I don't want it deal with uh, you know, classification. I want everybody in there. So the SGNA, the indirects, and the directs, all in there. Your temporaries, the same thing. Yeah. Put it in there, and you want to see if you're above or below the industry average, which is around $2.25 per hour, uh, per labor dollar. So for every dollar you pay in labor, I get $2.25 back in value add to pay for my labor, and to pay for my overhead and everything else I have going on. Great. So that's the average. Some companies are in the $3 and up range. Mm. They're very profitable. And others are in the under $1.60 and they're struggling. Yeah. You can really see what's happening on that. So take a look at your value add and see where that's going over the years. Okay. The last item I have is customer selection. Mm. It is by far the single biggest item you have to choose. It's your choice who you serve as a customer <coughs> and um, you take on as a customer. And so for you to select the right customers and have them in your, have the ones you want to work with. One, it makes your life a lot easier. It reduces the complexity we talked about yeah. and just makes your value proposition with that customer that much more robust and, and um, uh, I, I think everyone walks away happier that way. Yeah. So you've seen through your benchmarking surveys that if you really watch those three key items, 
those are really good markers for success in the business. Those would be outstanding. And the last item, if you want to throw in there, would be structured organization, head count, which is really part of the complexity thing again. Right. And it also gets into the value added per labor dollar. So That's you correct. see it a couple of different ways. Well, great. Thanks, Jeff. That was very interesting. And I think those are some things that sometimes we don't always keep in front of us in terms of good benchmarking um, values that can really help you know whether you're headed in the right direction. So we really appreciate you taking time with us today, Jeff. And we look forward to continuing this conversation in the future.